<laughs> so let's look at graphing <laughs> y equals 5 halves x minus 2. So you guys are already laughing. Math is fun. No, we're not going to No, uh, you're not laughing at me. Now, you're welcome to laugh. So <laughs> this is in my. Yeah, could you have opened that drink a little <laughs> bit more loudly? Seriously. <laughs> We're matching this up with the form y equals mx plus b. So if I do that, what is my slope represented by the letter m? It's 5 halves, 5 over 2. Now remember, bless you, we're looking at this as rise over run. What's my y-intercept? The y-intercept is the ordered pair 0 negative 2. And even if you forget that, you should still know that for every y-intercept, x is 0. And in this case, if x is 0, you would see that y equals negative 2. Okay. Now, when I have the slope and I have the y-intercept, you have to know which one to use first. What do I use first? The y-intercept. Okay, I use the y-intercept first. The slope tells me how I move. But you can't know how to move until you know where you start. So, we start with the y-intercept, which is 0, negative 2. Where does every y-intercept occur? On the y -axis. Every y-intercept is on the y-axis, right? So when I plot it, it goes here. Remember, this is the y-axis. This is your x-axis. So 0, negative 2 is right here. Then I've got my slope of 5 halves. Is that positive or negative? Positive. Positive. That means from left to right, what will my line be doing? Increasing. It should be increasing. should be going up. So if you're drawing it and it's going down, it's decreasing, then you're messing up. So my slope is 5 over 2. So from this point, I'm going to go up 5 units and go over 2 units. Again, go up 5 and over 2. Now I'm out of space here, so I can always reverse that and go backwards. So let's go down 5 and to the left two. Now since I've got a ruler, I can easily connect these points. But here's something I want you to be able to do in case you don't have a ruler. I want you to be able to identify those midpoints. Okay? Uh, it's probably easiest if I look between these two points right here. From this point to this point, you have a rise of 5 and a run of 2. What's half of 5? Two and a half, what's half of two? One. So if I go up two and a half and over one, I get a nice midpoint value. So the more points I have, the more accurate my graph is going to be. I can do the same thing here, up one, two and a half, over <coughs> one, bless you. Up two and a half and over one. So the more points I have, the easier it is to graph this guy, especially when you don't have a straight edge. But today, I am prepared. Remember, you draw your graphs to the edge of the graphing window. You put arrows at the end, and we're good to go here. Other questions about that guy? No? What was that? You know, it should be, yet yeah, here I am explaining it. But in case you guys forget, you can always check out my fantastic videos on youtube.com slash mathman1024. Although I don't know why I'm advertising on my own channel like that, because, well, if you found it, then you, you're already here. So you see how it compares with what the computer graph is. Everything matches up perfectly. Now, something I do want to mention to you guys is there is a formula for the slope. Do you guys remember that? Mm -hmm. it was like negative something a over b. Well, that's if it's in standard form. It would be negative a over b. But remember the slope? We refer to this guy as rise over run, right? Mm -hmm. Now, rise over run means the rise is a change in the y direction and your run is a change in your x direction, right? That's how I've been graphing this? Okay. So the formula for this, to find the change in y, it's 
y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay. Remember change, to find the change from one thing to another thing, uh, we use subtraction. And these are subscripts here. So if I've got two points, so this is when I am given when I'm given two points x1, y1 and x2, y2 <laughs> yeah yeah, so when someone just randomly walks in with McDonald's, even though there's not a McDonald's anywhere nearby, <laughs> you begin to wonder how this happens. So, we can use this formula. And, you know, we can identify a couple of points here so you can see that the slope is going to be the same as 5 over 2. So what are the coordinates for this point right here? I'm pointing. I'm pointing right here to it. Right here. S <laughs> aquí. Hasta aquí. You mean negative 2, negative 7, the x coordinate and then the y coordinate. What about the coordinates for, let's do this guy up here. I'm nowhere near the point. Don't tell me you can't see that. 4, 8. Do you all agree? Now, according to this formula, I should just be able to plug in these, these coordinates and get my slope. So if my slope, let's write the formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I don't care which one you label the first one, which one you label the second one. So let's do this. Let's say this is the first point. And let's call this guy the second point. What's what what's the funny? Uh-huh. Ha ha. What's y2? What's the y coordinate for the second point? It's 8 minus what's the y coordinate for the first point? Now, maybe we should do this. Put parentheses around what you're plugging into the formula. So, put parentheses around the 8 parentheses around the negative 7 over, let's see, we've got x2 minus x1. What's x2? What's the x coordinate for the second point? What about for the first point? Negative 2. So what does this give me? What's that numerator? Right, a minus, when you subtract a negative, that becomes a positive. So we have positive 15 over. That also changes. And how do you reduce 15 over 6? By a factor of 3, and you still get 5 over 2. Here's the thing. It wouldn't matter if I had said this was the second and that was the first point. It would still work out. The only difference you would see if you had flopped these, the order around is that you would have had negative 15 over negative 6. And then what would a negative over negative have been? Positive. So it would have been positive. <coughs> so when you change your, your signs, you got to change all the signs. Like if you change that to addition, you got to change your negative to your positive? Well, when you subtract a negative, it's like a negative times a negative, so it becomes a positive. Okay. Same thing here. Negative times a negative is going to make that a plus. Any other questions about this guy?